Well, here we are in a Ford Focus RS, the new Ford Focus RS. If you are familiar with Autocar at all, you will also be very familiar with this car because we've driven it, we've road tested it, it's already beaten in the can of 26R in a twin test, it's even duffed up the Nissan GTR. In fact, the only thing that we haven't done for it so far is given it a little family reunion. Ask an auto car road tester what he likes about the Focus RS and you'll get a very, a very long list of things in reply. It's not just the 305 horsepower straight five engine and the immense punch that it packs. It's not the fantastic brakes or the simply unbelievable handling. It is the way that all these disparate elements fit together to create what is in our view at least far and away the best front wheel drive driver's car that has ever been built. I'm now driving the Mark I Focus RS. Really very hard to believe that this car is seven years old now. It still feels to me thoroughly modern. It still feels very fast. And that's thanks not only to its light weight, but also the 217 horsepower turbocharged transverse four-cylinder motor in its nose, driving the front wheels and the front wheels alone. In many ways, this what set the template for the modern Focus RS. And indeed, from its time back in 2002, right up to almost the present day, it's always been our favorite hot hatch. Nothing has got you closer to the action within that genre. In fact, the only people who didn't really enjoy the Focus as much as they should have done were the board of the Ford Motor Company, because rumor has it that they lost up to 5,000 pounds on every single one they built. This was a car that went down the line, but then it went somewhere else to be finished. It's an incredibly special car. It has a quaff differential in it. It has very trick suspension. And it was this kind of attention to detail that made it the iconic driving experience that it was both in its time and that it remains today. However good the two focuses are, this Escort RS Cosworth is the only one of our happy trio that can truly claim to call itself a cult car. It's not just the outrageous looks, it's not even the legendary 2-litre Cosworth engine under its bonnet. It's the fact that this car was a genuine homologation special and the things that people like Juha Kankanen did in them have gone down in motorsports history. Another reason people love this car so much is that it didn't take anyone very long to figure out that it's not actually an Escort at all, whatever the badge may say and however the car may look. It is, in fact, nothing more or less than a short Sierra Cosworth and you only need to look under the bonnet to see that the engine faces in a north-south location rather than an east-west one to know it. But despite all that, despite its four-wheel drive, despite its 227 horsepower, for me the idea of the Escort RS Cosworth is not matched by the reality. This is a frankly disappointing car to drive particularly relative to the other two. The engine is coarse, the gearbox is notchy, the suspension is baggy, and the body structure seems to have all the torsional rigidity of a wet lettuce. Truth is, this car is 10 years older even than the Mark I Focus RS, and when you drive it, you feel every minute of it. So this is how it all pans out in the end. If you want a cult car, spend 13 to 15,000 pounds on the Escort. If you want instead the greatest hatchback that's ever been built, spend 25 to 27 on the Mark II Focus. But for me, the Mark I Focus at 9,000 pounds costs about the third of the price of the Mark II Focus, but has at least two thirds of its ability. That alone makes it the pick of the bunch here. And there we would normally end, but for one last thing. Deep within all of these cars, beats the heart of Essex, and no one could call this video truly complete without one last little test. Off the line, the four-wheel drive of the Escort gives it an advantage that not even the Mark II Focus can do anything about, let alone the Mark I. But as speeds increase, the Mark II Focus disappears into the distance and very soon is past the Escort and away. The Mark I takes a little longer, but with less power it's perhaps what you'd expect, but soon the aerodynamic advantage, particularly because it hasn't got a barn door on the back of it like the Escort, becomes very apparent. And at about 120 miles an hour, the Focus Mark 1 is past the Escort and gone for good.